Most babies are conceived by sperm fertilizing an egg and the fetus growing inside the mother's uterus. But sometimes this is not possible. One or both parents might have fertility problems. For lots of different reasons, some parents are unable to have children. In fact, there are 5 million children worldwide born to parents who either couldn't or had difficulty producing babies. One way of helping with infertility problems is through IVF and has been in use since 1978. IVF stands for in vitro fertilization. This sounds complicated. By the end of this video, you will know all about how IVF works. IVF can be used when natural fertilization inside the body cannot occur. This is often due to the reproductive parts of the mother or the father not working properly. In IVF, an egg is removed from a woman. Outside the body, sperm is introduced to the egg and fertilizes it. The fertilized egg develops to form an embryo. And the embryo is then returned to the woman's uterus, where the fetus then develops in the uterus as normal. We will look at this process in more detail later in the video. The wonderful thing about IVF is that it can overcome a multitude of fertility problems. If a woman has problem with her eggs, then donor eggs can be used. Or if the male sperm are the problem, then donor sperm can be used. Or maybe the sperm and the eggs are both healthy and compatible, but the woman's uterus is inhospitable. Then a surrogate mother can be used, but with the mother's eggs and the father's sperm. So let's have a look at the IVF process in a little more detail. The first step is called down regulation. Drugs are used to turn off a woman's ovaries by suppressing the production of the hormones FSH and LH. We learned about FSH and LH in the menstrual cycle video, which you may want to watch to remember how they work. In brief, FSH and LH are the hormones that trigger egg development and ovulation during a woman's monthly cycle. Turning FSH and LH off suppresses a woman's natural menstrual cycle, making the stages of treatment more effective. This happens for about two weeks. The next step is to boost egg supply. This time, lots of follicle stimulating hormone FSH is injected for about 10 to 12 days. FSH increases the number of eggs your ovaries produce. This means that there will be more eggs available to be collected and fertilized in the treatment. More eggs increases the chances of success. Once enough eggs have been produced, another hormone called HCG is injected. This causes the eggs to mature so that they are ready to be released from the ovaries. The woman is sedated and a very small pipette is used to remove the eggs from the woman. The eggs are outside the body and ready for fertilization. With the eggs removed, the woman is now given progesterone hormones to prepare the lining of the uterus to receive the embryo. Now up steps the man. Sperm are collected into a petri dish where they are processed and the healthiest ones are kept. Healthy sperm have a higher chance of survival and are most likely to fertilize the eggs. The egg and sperm are then mixed together in a petri dish and left to fertilize for about 20 hours. If the fertilization happens, the embryos are kept in a warm place set at human body temperature to replicate the mother's uterus. They stay here for up to six days to ensure they are starting to develop into embryos. As I said earlier, the woman is given progesterone to make sure her uterus is ready to receive the embryo. The best two or three embryos are then transferred back into the woman's uterus by using a long plastic tube called a catheter. This procedure is actually really simple. Two or three are chosen to increase the chance of survival. IVF is complete and the natural embryo development continues inside the woman's uterus. Watch part two to discover some of the advantages and disadvantages of IVF treatment. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Comment below if you have any questions. Why not check out our Fusco app as well? Until next time.